of night that was when Vinny was on stage and we were rocking and rolling and doing that uh, whole last in line thing. Hey, everybody, Ron Onesti here with you. Artists on lockdown, hanging and banging as we are every Thursday night. Here we are outside of Chicago in St. Charles at the Arcata Theater, home of rock and roll heaven. And I tell you what, we are so excited once again to welcome a couple of great guys, a couple of legends on our show. Uh, we've got uh, Frankie Bello from Anthrax and, of course, the great Pat Travers is going to join Carmine a piece with me tonight. Vinny is on the road. Carmine, why don't you come along, say hi to everybody, all the big fans out there. We've got uh, a bunch of people already following us. There he is. Hey. There he is. What's hey. up, brother? How you doing? Look at you. Hey, we got to say, you know, we got to start doing. I want to, so many people are chiming in, Carmine. We see them in the comments. And I want to thank them because they're Emma. Let's see. Eddie's with us. Anne is with us. Heidi, every week. You I don't guys see just want to thank I don't you. Guys. Well, I do. Because oh, maybe. Heidi. I see Heidi. Hi, there's Heidi. Heidi. Yes. Yeah. Tommy is with us as usual. Jimmy McGregor is with us. So you guys, thanks very much for all the comments and all the support. Tonight is a big night, Carm. We've got, you know, I'm so cool. I've never met Frankie Bello, and I'm, I'm just really excited to talk I, to him. Big I, Anthrax I think, fan. I think I met him once or twice. I don't really know him that well, but you got my other the other guy's a good friend of mine. We did albums, well, tours. I know. He, he There's was a at lot my to party. He was, he was at my party last week. He's awesome. Yeah, no, he, I mean, the legendary freaking Pat. And, yeah. you know, we've done several shows together also. And uh, I definitely am going to touch on a couple of the albums, a couple of my favorite albums that you guys did. Tonight. I hear we so, might tour with Pat with Cactus. Um, well, um, I talked to Bruce Pilato today, and that might is a for sure. We oh, actually good. got a date down. So you know? um, I don't yeah. know if I could say it yet. So that, that is that. a Bruce thing. So I love it's that. definitely going to be. Love, oh, man. I love playing with Pat Travers Band with Cactus. Yeah. What the heck is that going to be like? I'm so excited sure. about that. Sure. So so what do you say we bring the guys to the microphone? <laughs> yeah. uh, again, you know, since 1984, Frankie Bell has been with Anthrax, uh, with, with Helmet as well. And, and he's got a great book out. Oh, my gosh. Hope, hopefully we can really delve deep inside uh, those pages. It's going to be very exciting. So let's bring Frankie Bell to the microphone. Frankie, how you doing, buddy? Oh, hey, guys. Hello. How are you? Oh, how are you? Doing, how are you? Oh, right, right. Right. How are you? What's how going good, on over there? It's another Italian show over here. It's, it's got to happen like that. I, I, I knew it was going to be very Italian. So I feel very comfortable. I'm very, I'm very, I just ate some uh, ragu upstairs. I'm very good. Ragu. She just made it. My hey, wife made gnocchi we, we, went to the, we went to a market here in Florida. It was a, this guy was selling uh, homemade gnocchi and pasta. Uh, $11 yeah, a pound, right? Well, Worth it. $111 a pound, homemade or it was it, it, delicious. You know? Was it? Yeah. Was did it, did it? Did it taste like the homemade? You know what I mean? Like yeah. you know when it's, it's the first bite, right? You know it. Smooth. You know it's right. You know when it's homemade. I, I love it, was it like smooth. that. It was smooth. And, and Frank, exactly you're awesome another the texture. Another one of these uh, these guys that I got to deal with every week because I'm from Chicago. You know the <laughs> Chicago Italian, but you know my favorite. I got to say my favorite Italian place on the planet, pretty much outside of Florence. My mom was born. Is yeah. uh, is Arthur Avenue in the Bronx, man? Uh, so you know, that's, the, that's, the boy. that's the truth. Right, I, I, the, that's where you're from. I'm, yeah, I grew up in the Bronx. I grew up in Throx right. Neck in the Bronx uh, over there, but uh, Arthur right. Avenue is a, a mainstay. You go over there, the delis, the you know, the, just the yeah, delis yeah. alone is just it's insane, yeah. and it's still there. The great thing yeah, about it is well, still there. People can come there and come here and and just live the life over there. It's still the I'm best. I'm telling you, it really yeah, is. You I'm go to Mike's you. Deli. Uh, by David over there, and you know it's it's over a hundred years old. And what oh, they yeah. did, it was an outdoor market that yeah. they just enclosed, but the 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 concrete's still the same. Yeah. I mean, you could actually feel like the the horse drawn wagons with the uh, vegetables oh. on there. You know, it's it's a great place. You know what it is? Come on, you ever been there before? You ever been there before? I've never been there. No, dude, you got to go one time oh, in your life because it's, so it's 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 so worthwhile. Really, just yeah. one time because well, the next you, time you, I'm in New York, we're, we're trying. I'll go. You let me know. I'll go for sure. No doubt, yeah. but um, you feel yeah, it. Where, like do you the, 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 where do you live now? I live in Westchester. I have a kid in school and all that stuff, so I, oh. I moved up to Westchester. But I'm, yeah, I we still have, we have a place. You live, the West. Frankie, we the you you live right by, and I'm sure you know this. A guy that as a very has come to be a very close friend of mine. Has been by my house. I've been by his, and he's going to do his show. He does his one man <sighs> show of a Bronx tale, Chaz Palminteri. Ugh. Uh, you know what? I, I actually, my first trip into 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 Arthur Avenue, really, 
It was at the invite of Chaz. And wow. I'm walking down the street with him. You might as well be walking with Jesus Christ in, in Bethlehem, <laughs> you know, to be walking with Chaz Palminteri in, in the Belmont, you know, Belmont Avenue. He's just the guy. incredible. He's we the went guy. By, you know, we know what's by, crazy? Uh, 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 the uh, uh, the uh, uh, Cannoli King uh, oh. over there. Uh, and it's just, it's just a fabulous place. It's fabulous. He's, he's like it. the king. I do it. I, I met Chaz one time at the Central Avenue Diner in, here in Westchester. He was uh, surrounded by you know, a bunch of sure. the obvious, you know, just fun, friends. I went right up to him. I was such a fan of his. He couldn't have been nicer. It felt oh, like absolutely. you knew the guy. You know, he, he felt like you knew the guy forever. Really, what a sweet guy. Talented. No, guy. absolutely. Yeah. Like I said, we'll go to uh, well, we'll by Jerome over there uh, at, at, uh, at Gino's uh, uh, Bakery. And, I mean, all these places. we got to take you. Frankie, I'll, we'll contact you. We're going to grab Carmine. And How, do you know? do How do you know about this stuff in the Bronx? You're from Chicago. You, you understand. <laughs> Carl, I know things. Mooch. I know things. I know, know things. things. <laughs> you know things. You know, no, I, and I'll tell you what. Here's you No, know, you know when you got to go, Carm? I'll tell you what. So I've been putting on this. Uh, uh, I also put on the um, um, the uh, uh, the entertainment for the Hoboken Italian Festival. Another oh. whole world over there. You? But the okay. state weekend. I do. Yeah, I've been doing it for a while. Wow. So it's in September. It's the first... Um, the first weekend after Labor Day in September. Now, on that Sunday is called Ferragosto, which is a, a, an Italian holiday. And the Ferragosto Festival is in the Bronx, right down Belmont Avenue. Mean, one no, day, no they close the street. It's wow. incredible. They got pigs on the spit. They're making the spingy, the, 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 the dough and the oh, oil. Right on the Everything. Street. Yeah. We're doing yeah. it. I, I'm in. You guys call me. Okay. I'll, I'll be there I'll come. for sure. I'll come. Jazz stops by. Other guys from the Bronx Tail stop by. Uh, uh, you know who else? Um, oh my gosh. Uh, what's his name? Uncle Junior from the Sopranos. Um, oh yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. The old guy. Yeah. Yes, I can't yeah. think yeah. of it. Uh, uh, think Dominic Kinesi. Dominic Kinesi. Good. He's out there with a the guitar sitting so by the clam house. <laughs> it's a, the whole thing's a freaking movie. It's a oh, movie. Oh, oh, definitely. You, you got to call me for that. We're gonna I'll do come it. Up, I'll come up it. from Florida for that one. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm telling it. you, it's worth it, and it's jam packed, <laughs> and it's fabulous. So, but Frankie, well, thank you for joining us on our show. Thanks for having me. Man. I'm loving we this. Can't wait. Like I was telling Carmine, I, I'm I've been getting in, into your book in the page deep in the pages of your book. I'm uh, going to talk about it. If that's okay. Thank you. Of course. And of course. Um, but let's before we get into it, you know, legend Please. icon. You, you talk Carmine. Okay. You got to be talking Pat Travers yeah. too, and yeah. he's coming right. He's, yeah. he's one of your brothers, Carmine. I know that you do totally. so many things totally. together, and oh, uh, I, I really want to talk about the albums you guys have together because that's some amazing yeah. music. So let's bring him to the microphone, Pat Travers. Say Whoa. Pat. Hey. hey guys, hey, Pat. <laughs> hey, count me in on the food fest. Up there. <laughs> you, how cool would this be? I'm like so a rock there, and roll man. tour. Yeah. Get in on it. Rock and roll legends. Are you kidding? We gotta we gotta get Bruce to get us some gigs in the New York area at that time. <laughs> yeah, that that Labor Day weekend. weekend or the, that would yeah. be great. I would I'll play that. bass on anything you guys want to play. I'm in. I <laughs> okay. promise. Okay. Yeah, okay, we you we got, got our trio right here. All oh right. Yeah. <laughs> Good to you see sing, you back. Frankie, do you sing? Yeah, I sing. Yeah. Okay. Both. Absolutely. I'm got in. Hey, we got Pat. We got I, back my vocal. I'm in. I, absolutely. Well, Frank, you can do? you sing? Ready to go. Frank, can you sing that some more? Eh? That's oh, yeah. important. Yeah. <laughs> I have Dino on my right there. Dino's always there. Hey, I, I, I almost did a session with um, Bobby Rydell and Ann Margaret Volati. Oh, wow. No wow. kidding. Oh, Bobby God. Rydell. Huh? I would love that. Yeah. That would be beautiful. Be the they, they, got, they, got, brought, they, got, they got Slim Jim Phantom to do it, so now they're going oh, to no they're give me another song. Oh, I said, look, I can play brushes, whatever you need. Yeah. <laughs> cool. You know what? First of all, you brought bring up Bobby Rydell. Let's just say it right now. Uh, the next couple of weeks, we're doing reruns because of the holidays, but January 6th, right. artists on lockdown, hanging on banging. We return, yeah. and we will have, as our guest, Bobby Rydell. Bobby so, Rydell. Wow. 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 Awesome. Hey, nice. I, I was uh, amazed to see the counter up here. Season two, episode 22. That's amazing. How did Seven, all that, five episodes, How most, did all that time go good. by? Most episodes are 13 episodes. We have Our first episode was 52. Wow. Yeah, our third, our third yeah. season was 52 season. weeks. Now wow. we're 22 weeks beyond the 52 weeks. Cool. Amazing. That's awesome. 
You know what, though? Maybe we touched on some because I'm going to – a guy I like Pat Travers, okay? He's got project, and that's one of the things I love about Pat and Carmine. Project after project after project, concept after concept, uh, 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 compilations, uh, collaborations. So that's Amore, my way. Can we get a rock and roll album of those songs? You're doing Motown, Set Me Free. We, we got the trio right here. I'll play yeah. whatever you guys want to do. We got the trio. Yeah. Moon in. over the Bronx. <laughs> I, I, love I love it. I love it. I love Set it. Set it up. I'm in. You know what? Yeah, I'm about great. only half kidding there. I'm just telling you. I think it would be awesome. I know. We got, it's Why not, we man? Why yeah, not? You know, think about what you guys do with the Motown. and, and you have to your change own. Pat's name, though. What's that? You have to change your name to something like Patrick. Patricio. Patricio. Patricio Travers. Pasquale <laughs> Travers. I love it. Trevio. <laughs> <laughs> Traverso is a place you know Traverso is a place in Italy yeah. Traverso so we, we can make this work I'm, <laughs> I'm loving it I'm not loving it hey you don't have Let, to write the songs they're already written uh, boy yeah. oh, man, I'll tell go you in that's there, cool. go in and play that's easy well it's the same concept when you guys do you guys heavy freaking rock and rollers but you're hitting Motown you're hitting the, the R&B you know obviously uh, set me free also, you know what I thought was really, really cool on your balls album, your 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 extra oh. track there. What you you know, I mean, I think that was amazing what you guys Which did. Track? Extra well, track. Never gonna, <laughs> yeah, oh, the, the, never the, gonna uh, give you up. The the, uh, the one that you brought to the table. Uh, the Barry White one. The Barry oh. White one. The Barry White's the extra yeah. track. Barry oh, White. that yeah. Oh, what made you go was, down that uh, road, Pat? That wasn't that that was, I was. Wasn't I track. was thinking about that the other day, and I was going, "That was kind of a weird thing to do, you know." But I always voice. loved that track. I loved that track yeah. when I was, you know, about seven, sixteen, or seventeen, or something. Yeah. So uh, but, but, it was yeah, fun. I did. We did one of my originals, and then he did. He said, I want to do this one. I said, okay. Yeah, Barry White. I, I, mean, up and I did the <laughs> drums in Long Island. I did yeah, the drums on Long Island. He did it all in, in uh, where did you do it? In, in uh, Florida. I did it at, at Sean's place in yeah, Popka. Right. Yeah, and Sean I came down and did the video. I remember the video driving around. And my it. my son <laughs> shot that video. Yeah. 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 Awesome. yeah. yeah. That was cool. Yeah. We just. Yeah. Did a thing, you know. Who's that car we were in? You had that car, the old classic. Oh, car. the Riviera, yeah, '93 <laughs> Riviera. Right. What a great car. That oh, was, yeah. uh, the ribs. Yeah, finally, let that go a couple of years ago, but that was one of the best cars I ever. How had. long was that front end on that rib, Pat? It just kept <laughs> going, of course. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I just thought the car looked awesome. It, it, it really had uh, and. It was a great it car. Had, drove kind great. of futuristic lines. Yeah. When it first came out, yeah, it had the futuristic was. lines. And the front, the original ones had those, those front lights. That, that pointed the back, the back and the fastback. Yeah. Yeah, Riviera's were always cool. Riviera's it looked like the Speed Racer were car, like the Mach 5. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Right? What year they was always, that? Always, they always had, well, mine didn't, but usually you could get like the biggest motor GM offered. Yeah. In a Riviera, four fifty fives, and all these big engines. Four speed. Yeah. Well, not in a Riv. That's hey, you a, lost your green screen. That's a yeah, green yeah, There we go. Yeah. Yeah. So, so oh, there we go. Oh, there, 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 there you go. <laughs> yeah. So that's what's behind you, really, huh? I don't know what you're talking about. I was going to say that's nice room. <laughs> this is a green screen too. <laughs> no, that's not. That's a real. No. That's a green screen also. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, we were talking about the Balls album uh, uh, a minute ago, but uh, who came up with the concept or the, the song, which I love this, Remind Me to Forget About You? <laughs> remind me what? To remind, to remind me to forget me you. To forget you. Remind me to forget you. Remember that? I, I, we were just throwing we, around. We, yeah, we were just throwing around of ideas. Saying and some lyrics stuff, and, you know. Nice. She looks. The other one was. She looks uh, nice from far, but far from nice. You know? <laughs> Is awesome. that how you would do it? You guys are just bouncing. From a distance. 
You guys would just bounce yeah. off of each other. That's how you go back and forth. Yeah. We well, just... no, this, this album we actually did all in the same studio. Wow. So we sat around and threw the, the lyrics. What about the uh, Taken? That you know, talking about my iguana and all that stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, well you guys, we you were guys having must fun. have been on something during I that. Never... I mean, really. Yeah. Now that but, is yeah. an interesting album. It sounds it very interesting. Really sounds interesting. very interesting. And we had yeah. T.M. Stevens play bass and sing one of them. Wow. Yeah. And, and that awesome. was awesome. I mean, it's a shame what's happened to him. It's like Phil Chen from Rod Stewart Band passed away today. Yeah. Just Who did? Yeah. Yeah. Somebody just sent me a picture Old of you. Old Chen. Somebody, yeah, somebody just uh, sent me a picture of me and him together at one of these bass yeah. player things. I, we were, so mad at, I lost you know, two of my my favorite brother bass players no. this year, Tim Bogart and Phil Chen. Mm -hmm. I, I emailed Tony Frank and I texted Tony. I said, are you okay? Yeah. He's my yeah. third most favorite bass player. Wow. Yeah. Tony's awesome. Yeah. Wow. It's, uh, it's a huge shame here, you know. Yeah, Phil and Chen, the, guy, about, the uh, guy that played with me with Rod, he played a hot oh, sure. Sexy and you're in my heart. Oh, Phil. 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 Jamaican Phil. Phil? Yeah, Jamaican oh, Phil. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. man. He yeah, was yeah. so awesome. He, He's awesome. I, what a beautiful well, he, man. He played with the Doors when we toured. That's right. Him. Yeah, I remember. Really? Yeah. Well, I didn't he, know that. He was wow. so cool. Yeah, Phil we did this tour in 2005. It was the Doors of the 21st Century. Phil was playing with him. And you had Ian from the cult singing. Yeah. Right? Oh, we right, had Vanilla right. Fudge from the Dam. Then we had Pat and we had the Yardbirds. We yeah. were doing sheds that whole summer. It was great wow. until yeah. John Densmore sued everybody. <laughs> and oh, stopped my gosh. It, stopped the dead. And we even did one of those. Remember those decades, uh, VH1 decade shows? Yeah. They paid oh, yeah. for one of those. They paid a fortune for everybody. And I heard they, they spent a million dollars on that show. And they could never release it because John Densmore wouldn't let him use the name. Oh wow! Yeah. Oh, that was the the one uh, in Atlantic City. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. What what a shame that was. Yeah, yeah, it was great. John Sebastian was on that one. John was Sebastian was there. Yeah. And and he got up and played the harp. harmonica. Yeah, wow. he's awesome. Yeah. Man. And this great. was all filmed. That was all filmed. You can't. And it was never. Yeah. Released. It was all filmed. And, wow! Look at that. And uh, whoever paid for it, I think VH1 paid for it. So they own it, but they can't ever release it. Oh, Not geez. under that title. They could release maybe individual uh, performers like Pat and Vanilla Fudge and all playing, you know, as a show, but they never did. Oh, you know? yeah. oh well. That's, too bad. Oh. That's terrible. You know, Frankie, we're talking about, you know, loss. And, and, and you know, I, I don't want to go right into the, I know you're 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 in uh, you know Bellows basement right now, just trying to be <laughs> be uh, be safe a, with everything. I'm a fly on the wall right now, listening to, to these guys talk right now. So this yeah. is awesome, right? I'm just like fanboy, just watching this. That's kind of, yeah, I know, I know. I get, to watch. I'm, I'm I'm lucky every week with these guys, but you know what? Your I'm going to read the, uh, the the name of your memoir has just come out: uh, Fathers, yeah. Brothers, and Sons Surviving Anguish. Uh, what is it? Abandonment and anthrax. I mean, that yeah. covers so much. <laughs> wow, that's a, good, yeah. that's a hell of a title. Yeah, Holy it's a, that is. It's that's a, a great title. I mine with bad stick in my life of sex, drums, and rock and roll. <laughs> yeah. This is this well, covers is so a, much. A little more hard. Yours is harder to remember. Yeah, it's it's a it's a long one. I just have a look. Shameless promotion right here. No, it's just have to have one right here. I just have to, oh, there you go. Yeah. See, I, I just usually go right here. I just say this for the fathers, brothers, and sons. But yeah, yeah. that's good, man. That's, good. that's the, awesome. Thank you. I have to. I'll get that. Oh, please, yeah. I'll send you one. Please, no worries. Yeah. My my pleasure. Uh, I'll order yeah, it. You just I'll order it tonight. You just just release it. Yeah, came, uh, November second came out. What, um, what publisher? Like it's yourself? a rare, rare bird publishing. It's called Rare Bird. Rare bird. Uh, very proud of it, and uh, yeah, it's awesome. it's it's a story about abandonment, pretty much. My dad took off when I was ten. Uh, wow. Family of five, you know. Looking, my heroes became musicians. Yeah, musicians. Yeah. That's who I needed a father figure. My my guys were um, bass players, so yeah. it became that, yeah. and it really took over that 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 hole that I was missing. We all have that. That somewhere we yeah. find a hole. We yeah. have a hole, and, and music fills that, and it is. Yeah. It's my, it, my it, it dad really helps. Died. My dad died when I just turned 12, and oh, I got sorry. into music right after that. Yeah. And yeah. I was so young, all the guys I played with were five, six years older. So 
they were like my brothers and yeah, my fathers great. and all that stuff. So yeah, I know it, what you mean. It yeah. kind of helps the it kind of helps the outlet. The music becomes yeah. the outlet, right, for all that pain, right? Right. right? Yeah, that's, well, what I, that's what I found. Yeah, music's a good thing to focus on. Period. Yeah. It Period. Mostly keeps you out of trouble. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, so for agreed. me, yeah. I was in gangs you know in Brooklyn, this, uh, and the music kept me out of trouble. That uh, you know. Uh, all the guys that I was in the gangs with all went up up the creek for murder, mm -hmm. for this and that. You know, I shied away from it. I started practicing drums, and yeah. and I noticed when I was practicing on our little porch in uh, in Brooklyn, all these little girls from the neighborhood would be out out in the front of my porch dancing around. And, stuff. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, hey, hey, this could be pretty cool. Maybe that's why I was married five times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Carmine, when you did that though with the, the drumming. Were the people from the gangs, were they pulling you back in? How does that work? You know, in those Well, days? they tried. They tried to, and I would just make up excuses like, oh, I can't. I got I got a gig to do. I, I'm playing in school. And my actually, my first gig I ever did in my life was in the Bronx at, at a Bronx uh, block dance. Mm. I, I got paid $7.50. Right. And the band was me on drums, my friend on guitar, yeah. and another guy on trumpet. What a combination. Wow. Yeah, a we job. do instrumental versions of like at the hop, you know, uh, at the hop and uh, uh, just I, a little push and shout and stuff like that. I kind of found growing up being a musician that even tough guys or whatever, rough guys sort of wanted you to do well. And, you yeah. know, you were treated a little different than. Uh, yeah. I agree. Yeah, let me, let me ask you guys, did you grow up following uh, like basketball or football and baseball? Not really. I, I didn't. I, I Well, I followed baseball because I'm a Yankee. I grew up in the Bronx. The Yankees were yeah. 10 minutes from my house. Yeah, so I, 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 that was yeah. the That was the easy thing. Everybody, my friends that I hung out with, they all were Yankee fans. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that happened. Yeah, I, never, I never did that. For me, it was all about music. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. And no, uh, I, I was, I, I've been doing mm -hmm. interviews this week talking about that. Yeah. You know, saying, you know, like now today, you know, you do records, as we all know, there's really no big money in it anymore. You just do it because you want to create music. And, kick. and for me, keep the legacy going, you know. Of course. Yeah. But there's no, you know, Absolutely. I mean, if you break down all the time you, we spend in the studio versus the money we make, it comes down to about 10 cents an hour. <laughs> We're working cheap. <laughs> exactly. And the streaming and the streaming. So that, that's what's interesting. If, I, if, I, you, if you count up all the notes that you put yeah. out into the universe versus wow. what wow. you're getting paid. You're working cheap. Yeah, real cheap. That's what's crazy. That is so a how, wild way to look at it. Yeah, so how how is it with you guys now? You've seen the, the record company business, the music business in general now. It's got to be so different for you guys specifically from the you were, the great yeah. days, the great yeah. days of music. I well, had a still taste here. I mean, you know, Antrax started in the 80s. Yeah, yeah 80, 84, I mean, 84. I mean, you saw, you saw the big money deals and the, yeah. Yeah. the merch yeah. deals and the publishing deals. Yeah. I mean, let's put it this way. My royalties for the Think I'm Sexy were huge until all the streaming started. Right. And then right. I, sold it, I sold it back to Warner Brothers like Bruce Springsteen just did. You know, I sold my catalog oh, yeah. to Warner Brothers and to EMI for the, the rock songs that were making the money because there was no mechanicals anymore. Mechanicals you I get know. when you, as so the audience knows, that's when you get paid when somebody buys a record. Yeah. Since nobody's buying records nobody's anymore, buying. Yeah. and no. people say, "Well, it's like YouTube is YouTube is like uh, the radio." It's not like the radio because someone said the other day, when you're driving in your car, you listen to the radio. You didn't know when you're going to hear the song you really like. <clears throat> yeah. right? that's why right. you listen to the radio. Right. But right. with YouTube, you pick and out the song listening. you like, and and you can have you have it on your phone. It can plug into your system. It right. can be in your car. It can be everywhere. Why do you have to buy it? No, yeah. and that's yeah. also what radio was great at was introduce introducing new music. Yes. You know, Super before exactly. before all the FM stations got uh, programming from Atlanta or someplace. Yeah, yeah. You exactly. know, different regions had different playlists, and yeah. you know, so it was a lot more organic in the way the the music moved around. It all yeah. depended on each other too. It was all. I mean, you're talking now. You're you're you know about the 40th anniversary of Anthrax, right around the time that uh, 
uh, Snort and Whiskey came out, you know, which is such a, you know, about 40 years ago, right? You're about the, the 40th anniversary of that song, Pat. Um, it was such a different time where yeah. people just lived the music and st- you watched the radio. You didn't just listen, you watched the radio. <laughs> yeah, Am I that's right? That's true. Because you yeah. can imagine, it was because imagination, there's no imagination anymore because exactly. everything's given to you, right? You can yeah. look at the radio and you can envision the players playing and how yes. they're playing it, all that great stuff that it's almost, it's very romantic almost. It's like, I, oh, I just I love this stuff. To, I listen to uh, radio classics on XM where they play all the shows oh, from yeah. the 40s and 50s. It's great stuff. And, yeah. You know, they, they were just produced to be listened to and it's amazing how how they do that. It's very clever. Yeah. yeah. So like, I, I get asked this in interviews, uh, probably you do too. Uh, how do you find new bands today? And, yeah. and my response is, I'm just driving my car and put the radio on. You know, yeah. today, do you think I have time to sit down and search YouTube for new bands? No, no that's you know? a problem. It's like everything, yeah, everything the radio. About music, so you got to do it. Here's your social media. You got to put your stuff up, you know, for social media, it doesn't do any good anyway, you know. Yeah, no. But, I mean, but, for, you know, formulaically, putting it on us, where you know we made the music. Mm-hmm. Your record company is supposed to promote the stuff, not me. You know, we and go out and thing. Promote, you, know, you know. If, if I was going to say, for, it's formulaically, it's almost impossible to get new music out. I mean, if you yeah. think about it, you know, it's the, the form. There's no formula there. There really isn't. Before you had it, you know, but there right. is none. You know, I mean, how do you possibly do it. New bands that make it, they made it over a period of years. They're not like 20 years old anymore. They're like more no. like 30. Because they, they've, had, yeah. they've had to make their way. And they yeah. make it to 30. So finally, they're back in the making, room. making this social media and YouTube getting views. And more, that's more that's views the and only, things, you know, you, you right. got to have a clickbait video, some kind of outrageous thing or something Absolutely. to... to Get, get above all the noise. You know? What attention. about TikTok? Yeah, yeah. I I have a 15-year-old boy. Yep. He's upstairs on TikTok every day. That's how his friends connect. He he learns, gets all his music. They get, collectively, they get the music from TikTok. Believe it. Believe it. Wow. That's how they do it. It's crazy. TikTok, man. Instagram. That's it. <laughs> and when, I put, when I put on their TikTok, all I see is Chicks with big boobs and fat ass to dance it <laughs> for 15 seconds. And some That's of them it. aren't chicks. That's the no. weird thing. <laughs> it's just, it's anything goes. Anything goes. It's like, it's Crazy obscure. Shit. It's Crazy. not about the music, though. It's it's about the no. shock value, right? Shock value. And then maybe there's, a, there's some kind of rhythm going there. And yeah. I sound like the old fogey here, but the truth of the matter is I love music. I want to I yeah. be creative and I, I want to hear creation. Yep. And there's a lot well, of, of I, I lot know of my, uh, my kids who were you know, in their 20s. Mm. But they find new music all the time, you know. And oh, no. But they find it. Me it. And, and, you know, they uh, seek no, and find. Well, That's the difference. Yeah. I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> it's just, you know, they, they've got their remote speaker and their Bluetooth yeah. speaker and their phone, and it's just, I'm going, who's that? It's like all this great material. It's amazing. Yeah. You know, yeah. well, Pat, you know, having having kids though, that, that age, I'm curious. I don't know very much about your family. Um, are your kids into music? Are they playing? I mean, what does like Pat Travers' son do? You know what I'm saying? Good question. <laughs> Good question. Uh, Elijah, yeah, we're going to take him into the studio here uh, just after Christmas. He's uh, he's 25. He plays guitar and keyboards, sings so good, and uh, writes so. He's got his own tunes, and uh, he's been doing that for a while. So, but now we, he's got a couple good ones, and I think he could get some kind of promotion from somebody. And then our daughter Amanda, she's like a soul singer. It's amazing. Oh, man. When yeah. I was when I was you know thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, I loved soul bands. You know that was. Oh yeah. Right around the height of uh, like 66, 67, 68. I just love that music and she does too. So we're thinking of uh, finding a couple of tunes that she can sing because she's amazing. Yeah, it's awesome to see that's, my that's kids. Fun. Uh, now, now, I really notice you have the, uh, the wolf man in the back and the mummy, the creature from the Black Lagoon. Is that it? What's yes, that there? 
So you went to a horror movies and I am. That, I like specifically the Universal era. I like He's that. He's in Anthrax. You kidding me? <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a lot of horror in my life. My son's very. My wife they, they're very into horror. All horror. But oh, my daughter. Life. My yeah. daughter does that stuff. She does the special effects makeup. Does she? Wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. She's she's doing two seasons of Star Trek right now. Oh wow! Good. Congratulations! The, the new one. Cool. Yeah, but and my son, he, he's in medical. He's doing great. But I noticed the pictures back then. I know, especially the creature of the Black Lagoon. That of one. Of course, and, Wolfman, and, I, and I'm still... looking at it from a distance. Yeah, yeah. But I see by the pose. At first, I thought it was uh, something else, but that's definitely the creature. From the yeah, there, I get oh, to the right. It's, to the right of that, I have Abbott Costello meet Frankenstein. And, you know, oh yeah, that's, oh, that's, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. of course. The best, the funniest <laughs> movie. That's yeah. exactly. the best. And Always. Wolf Man. And we're, 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 all, we're all still in our race. And, 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 and there's what we're talking about. There's that one great scene where uh, <laughs> Costello, uh, Lou, right? He's yeah. Lou. He's uh, Lon Chaney Jr. is is trying to tell him, look, you don't understand. Tonight, when the moon is full, I'll turn into a wolf. And Lucas Della goes, yeah, you and a million other guys. <laughs> that is so little. Yeah, that's so right. funny. Quick, those are quick lines, man, really fast. Yeah. You know, it was it, you know, it you know, what, you know what's funny? I'm sorry, Ron. Yeah. We were watching uh, Little Rascals. Right? Oh, now you oh, remember wow, Little yeah. Rascal when, St when Spanky was like this big, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but it was in color. No. Wow. Wow. It was in color. It's on Netflix. Wow. It's all in color, and and all the the talking, everything is so slow. Uh, yeah. Know? They go. They'd say something, and then you, there'd be like a three second reaction. <laughs> yeah. Time. Before. And then, they... then there's a reaction. Like, oh, oh man. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they were done in the twenties. It was great. Know? Yeah, that's fun stuff, man. That's I love fun. that spanky. Yeah. All those, oh man, yeah. wow. Marina, Marina, you know, my my theaters. Marina's hairstyles are open. Like tiles today. <laughs> my theaters were open in 1925. Both of them, you know, and, and right. we've been obviously renovating and stuff, and really hitting that 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 historic aspect about it. We're so, showing all the Charlie Chaplin stuff. All oh, the. Awesome. Um, oh. All the uh, our game comedies. Uh, uh, it's really something. And the you're tragedy, showing them. You mean like a movie theater? You're we're showing, showing them. them. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, we're doing awesome. last night. We're doing every Tuesday silent film night, and people oh. are like laughing, like belly yeah. laughing at these silent films. It's, it's truly funny it because it's truly yeah. funny. I hope these these generations that are coming up now. I don't want to lose what we had because it's no. important. It's important to laugh like that. It was rich. It was real. It was honest. Yeah. So yeah. I hope that's not lost forever. It's stuff like that and. The Charlie Chaplin stuff, that's just classic stuff. that yeah. It'll never be done again. Think about well, it. Well, you know, some of that is also considered art. So, I, you know, yeah. it'll always I be hope around. So. Yeah, that's you know what I, what I find interesting when I watch those things? Obviously, do I watch Charlie? Do I watch Buster Keaton? Do I watch Harold Lloyd? Do I watch? Absolutely. Yeah. But I really, you know, take notice. And if you think about it, the lighting, we all know what we know about production and, 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 um, the lighting aspect and the prop aspect and the set design aspect. Think about a hundred years ago, how they would do that. One yeah. camera shots, the whole film, one camera. They needed and, a and, lot of light and they had to wear like orange makeup or something yep. to counteract well, the bright. I was just down uh, at Carmine. You should really check this out at Fort Myers. I know you're down in Florida. I was just down at Edison's house down there in Fort Myers. Wow. And, right. and down there, they got a replica of the first movie studio. It was called the Black Maria, I think it's oh, called. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wow. And, it's, and what it was was this room, but Black on a pivot. Mariah. Like, Mariah, Mariah. Mariah. Yeah. And it was it was on a pivot thing So because they didn't have the lighting at the time. He, was, he didn't invent it yet. I mean, he was working on that. And so he had the, the it was this big black room yeah. and it had holes in the, in the ceiling, you know, in the roof. And they would pivot the whole building right. to get the sun, to maximize wow. the sunlight. Yeah. So they had it on like wow. a wheel? It had like yeah, a like wheel. This whole, it turned, wow. it completely turned, the wow. whole building completely There's another, there's turned. another thing on Netflix yeah, it, the, it the had to. Of, of movies, right? <laughs> and you know, Warner Brothers, you know how they started? They had those uh, viewers, like you look in, oh, yeah, yeah. The and the pages D. that used to go quick, right? And yeah. you roll it. Yeah, they have these these like um, storefronts that were just like rows of these viewers, 
And yeah, Nickelodeon. Put, they call them yeah. Flicker yeah. machines, right? There. I'm doing, and it was yeah. first Warner Brothers. Yeah, that was, it was that the Nickelodeon. Was right? Fatty Arbuckle. I don't know if you remember Fatty yeah, Arbuckle. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, was a big star of those things. Yeah. Yeah. How how the hell old are we? Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I got Pat, I got I Pat Travers, Carolina Beast, Frankie Bello, and I'm bringing up Fatty uh, Arbuck, Arbuckle stories. You kidding me? Nobody would think this, but I love this stuff. So believe me, I love film. I love how it's yeah. created, how yeah. it's originated. It's awesome. I love that stuff. Me too. Yeah, me too. You know, I, you I told mind. Leslie today. I told Leslie today. I mean, when we lived in New York before uh, and L.A., well, before COVID, man, I used to go to movies all the time. Yeah. You know? I, I, I went to the movie once in the last I, two years. You know, yeah, I was always in the movies. movies in years. You know, oh, yeah. Oh, you know, seven, you know, all just always moving. Now there's movies coming out of well, you know, A lot, a lot of it's coming in. Because of COVID now, because it's mostly on TV, a lot of them are coming to the cable channels now. But I brought my son yeah. two weeks ago, masked up and all that stuff, because I'm afraid of all this stuff. But, um, I brought him just to get out of the house with him, just to have a, a day out with my son. I thought it was yeah. important, just make him feel like it's 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 okay. And we just had a great night, and it was just me and him. Not a lot of people in the theater, you know. They, they have these big right. seats now. I don't know if you've been to a movie theater lately. They have these big ass seats, these big yeah. ass seats. You pay like fifteen bucks each, and yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what they have down here. Too. Yeah, and you you put your it's like a it's a lounge chair. You just lay back, and it, it's yeah. all good. You just hang out. Yeah. You have your popcorn. The last movie we saw in New York was Aretha. With Jennifer oh. Hudson. Oh yeah, yeah. great. And they had those nice. seats, and it was the theater on. We're on Broadway at 70th, so it's right there, the yeah. Lowe's, whatever it's called, AMC. It used to be the yeah. Lowe's. That girl's that got a cool. voice. That girl's oh, got a serious God, voice. That's, that's a belter right and there. You know, she never, she never won that that I know. contest, and but I, she's had such an amazing career. What a voice! Think about it. The judges yeah. know nothing. That's all that means. The <laughs> <laughs> judges <laughs> know nothing. Period. So she was the best. Awesome. I think the one I don't even know who won. I don't even think they did good. No, that's right. Like, How so. do you not win? I mean, what the heck? On her worst day, she blows her yeah. away. She had a she's cold, hundred and four fever. Yeah. How about that, that scene in that scene in Dream Girls where she's by herself and do you, everybody see that movie? I saw where it. she's where she's crying and she's yeah. singing. Yeah. And it's like uh man. No, she's the real deal. She's got more to go, that girl. She's got she's awesome. She's the real deal. I believe that too. I think she's yet to hit this massive thing. She, no, she hasn't hit the right movie, the right, the right time I for her. So. It, it'll happen. That's yeah. going to be huge. It's always movies, you know. It's yeah. not going to be hit records. No, what is that? <laughs> what is what that? Is that? Yeah. What is that? It, it's, it's a drum beat with some talking on it. <laughs> yeah. Now, well, I know we sound like old farts here, but I, you know what? I, I just love music, so I'll listen to anything. But I just want to be a little more creative than I don't. The machines are taking over. I just want to get back to the real deal of playing. I think that's important. Yeah, you know, Frankie, I, um, I, I got to, and I hope I'm not, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I, like I, that. I, I, I like that now. Now it's Frankie. Hey, yo, Frankie. Oh, Frankie. That's what my friends yeah. call me. That's all good. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you, Ron. Frankie. Frankie's, Frankie's a neighborhood guy, man. Come on. You exactly. can tell he's a neighborhood guy. My brother's <laughs> name is Frank. We never say Frankie. Yeah, I mean, he's he's I don't know. his son was little Frank, and he got big Frank. Oh, my birth certificate's Francis, by the way. Oh, <laughs> he's a real Italian. Uh, it's all hey, hey, it's it. I do want to touch a little bit. I hope it's not a little awkward, but it is in the book. You know, your brother. Go for thing. it. I'm all open. I'm all open to this, so I'm good. You know, Go it's it. it's a very serious thing, and and it's and, and it's a, a direction your book goes a little bit a little bit, and I think it's kind of an um uh, not as as a big of a story in rock and roll as it should be. That people should be aware of it because it's uh it, your brother was murdered. And, yes. and and you oh. went out to avenge your brother. And and I thought it was really cool, the perspective about, you know, like we all would do, because especially being the Italian thing, we'd go out there with a baseball bat, kind of let them want to, you know, oh, my gosh, you touched my family. And so how terrible that was, but how strong you had to be to actually ultimately pull back a little bit. Yeah. So okay. and I, and, and well, I'll I, go with, I didn't read the book. So what happened? So I'll tell you. I'll tell you guys a story. Uh, Pat, I want you to know through all, so so you can understand. Um, March twenty fifth, nineteen ninety six. Um, my brother Anthony went to a coffee shop to meet a friend. I came outside, who he had a problem with the year ago. The year ago. Long story short, the guy had, he set him up. It was set up. Wow. Took out a gun, three bullets. 
boom, done. Why? Right? It, Why? Ah, uh, ah, uh, that's uh, that's the, the question of life, right? Um, wow. They had issues. Um, there was a, a lot of people around. As you know, there's, there's a coffee shop in the Bronx, but it's really a lot of people hanging out. Nobody saw anything. It's one of those. It looks like uh, I, yeah. I equate it to an equ like it's like a Scorsese film, right? It's like yeah, a Scorsese yeah. film. Everybody sees everything, but nobody saw anything, right? Yeah. It was one yeah. of those. So, bottom line is, so uh, you know, the only thing I can remember, uh, and I don't want to bring people down here. The only thing I remember, and I say this in the book, is uh, my mom standing alone, looking at my brother under the sheet, right? And it was horrible. It's just a oh, horrible, yeah. horrible thing. I don't wish yeah. on anybody. So, and the reason why I knew it was my brother is because the sheet didn't cover his sneakers that he just got the week before that I knew. Uh, and it, it just, and I still have that. You'll never in my get head. that out of your head. It'll you'll never, never go. Get that out no. So, and so I, I only say that the sneaker thing, because, and what made me snap about the sneaker thing, I'm, now when I say snap, guys, I'm, I'm serious. I saw blood on his new sneakers. Yeah. And I just saw, I saw literal red, but my God, I just blacked out after that. So, just so you, you guys understand where I was yeah, going with yeah. this. For the next two weeks, there were no answers. They said they had right. a witness, but they didn't have a witness. I went dark. Anthrax didn't matter. Family didn't matter. All that mattered to me was revenge. To be really wow. honest, just revenge. And I didn't give a shit about music. Anything, nothing mattered, honestly. Um, and I went deep, man. So I say around, it was 10, 1030 at night. Every night, every night, I got suited up, dark, right? I just hunted. Around yeah. the same vicinity it happened, yeah. And I never touched a gun in my life, never. I would never. I hate guns. I'm not into it because what they did to my brother. So that's why I hate them. So I would. I talked to the wrong people. I had the wrong things in my hand. All of the above. Yeah. I stalked and I just waited outside and I just waited and I waited for two yeah. weeks. This is two weeks in. So the second week, around the the end of the second week, I'm looking. And I'm, I'm looking at this thing in my hand. I'm saying, how did I get here? How did I get here? I'm in this band. I'm, I'm success, successful. Thank God. I got a great family. You know, blah, blah, blah. I'm thinking of my mother. And I'm saying, look, if I do this, if that dude comes out of here and I do what I'm going to do, and I'm going to do it. And you got a gun. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I, I did. Um, I didn't want to. I didn't want to. It was just another guy. So long story short, all I thought is if I do this, what happens to my mother? What happens? Yeah, she she loses another son because either I'm yeah. gonna go go to jail or more than likely I'll be dead for retribution. You know how that, that works, eye yeah. for an eye stuff, right? So it it kind of pulled me out. Then I said, wait, I'm an idiot. What am I doing? I'm gonna my family's gonna lose me, and then this anthrax thing goes away too. So everything goes away. Yeah, yeah. And, and what right. are we gonna? And what for what then? And it I'm, doesn't I'm, solve anything. It doesn't solve. And, no. and uh, and my brother who passed, he would have smacked the shit out of me right off the bat. He said, "Are you out of your mind? Get back home." He would have just said it straight off. Right. So um, thank thank God I had some clarity, but that was a very real thing, and yeah. I never oh, no. had I, I, I never had that. that. I can yeah. see that definitely yeah. being blinded by yeah. that and uh, by how anguish. Old, how old was your brother? Twenty three. Oh man. Wow. Yeah, he's twenty three. He's young. Oh, I mean, man. he was a baby. So uh, and he was the good. You would have loved him. You guys would have loved him. Yeah. Even with hanging out with us, would, I know you would have. He's a, he's one of well, us. First of all, so, we wouldn't have called him Anthony. We called him Anthony. <laughs> God rest Definitely. his soul, man. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah. I mean, that's but so that was yeah. the story. So and then yeah. we went through the Bronx, the Bronx criminal court system, and I equated in the book to like a like a Scorsese movie because you had the bad guys with these wannabe guys, you know, the wannabes on this yeah. side, and then you had my family and friends on this side, and they put us all together in the same elevator. It was wow. insane. Oh was, wow! Very volatile. Hey, very you never bad. know. Somebody, just the right person, reads that book. Maybe it'll make a movie out of it. Well, yeah. it's, uh, it's, it's, yeah. let me tell you something. It was, it was very real and very ugly and, um, yeah. I, I don't wish it uh, on anybody. So yeah. there you go. Uh, I don't well, it's just terrible. God rest his soul. It will always be in our prayers and your Thank family, you. Frankie, really. I mean, that stuff Thanks, that just doesn't, it just doesn't go yeah. away. So, but I just want to touch on it. That was a story that I, I feel that, that like you, because you put in your, in your memoir that people need to, to understand about you and about the world, unfortunately. So yeah, for, thank you thanks yeah. for sharing with us. And I have I to say this, just, I'm sorry, just to get out of that. After that, I just dove into therapy and that brought me to a, a better place, just so you guys know. So I think you. a lot of people will, will be interested in that story and, and you know, uh, thanks, your emotional state. 
and how you were able to turn yourself around. You know that yeah, that's, overcome. Uh, yeah. that's a good story. Yeah, Thank I'll, I'll send you guys the book. I'll, I'll get. You, I'll send you guys the book if you want. Yeah, love, love it. Love it. Love it. We already got. We already have people on our on our chats or comments. Someone, there's already been three books ordered. I just want you to know. Well, well thank you guys. Uh, so thank you. Yeah. Uh, people, it's, 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 it's a great book. It's not solely about that, of course. It's about no. your rock and roll road this show. Great rock and roll story. Yeah, this yeah. great rock and roll story, as we all have in this, on this, uh, yeah, this viewing yeah. thing. But uh, yeah. And well, this I'm one, waiting for the Pat Travis story. You know, Pat, next year, it's 40 years that we did that tour with Ted Nugent and you. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. That's true. Year. Question. Oh, I think it's this year. Question. Wasn't it 81? Oh, 82. 82. It's 82. Yeah. Wow. How was, how was that? Is that Was that like a circus going through town? <laughs> how, how was that? Backstage? Uh, well, how was, with, I with have Ted, to know. Yeah. With Ted, uh, Ted was awesome. Ted was like, uh, Ted you know, was when, I went, when I went with Ted, uh, we had Ted on the show here a couple of times. Many times. And yep. You know why? We, we couldn't get a word in. <laughs> yeah, I love Chad. He's like a brother. But when when I joined him uh, after Rod Stewart, the way I joined him, I was telling the story recently. Uh, we did the American Music Awards with Rod Stewart. I, I forgot which song we were playing. Maybe Young Turks. A lot of keyboards. So Ted came up and he said, "Hey, look, when you're done playing this wimpy ass rock and roll, you want to play a man's rock and roll? Give me a call." <laughs> so when I when I was out of Rod, I called Ted and I immediately went up to his house. And we, we practiced, and he had this giant hill, right, that he would just take out his guns, and he had some machine guns. And, That's you know, crazy. It's an guns. arsenal. And, we, and we'd be, like, just shooting into the hill of targets. And, you know, it was it was ridiculous. That hill was so much lead in that hill. You know? <laughs> but, he was, but he was awesome, man. I, we, we were driving the cars. We, we, we didn't have buses. We drove in two cars, you know, me yeah. and Ted in one car, and – Eric St. Holmes, the bass player and the tour manager in the other car. And Ted was a maniac, man. He oh, was like, yeah. he would drive up to the other car right to the back and just tap him at 70 miles an hour, you know? Yeah. And, and we yeah. were both, we were all laughing. He never smoked any pot, never did any drugs, never. Isn't maybe amazing? I heard he drank a little bit, but uh, he's been amazing. What, what a great guy, you know? First guy I called. Huh? That's another book right there. I'm just putting it out there. Oh, oh heck yeah. Book. I'm doing a, a comic book, book but still next, a book. My next book, is called, <laughs> my next book is called Guitar Zeus, the book about all these crazy guitar players I played with, you know? That'd be they, good. That'd be good. They're all pretty crazy. <laughs> so you talk about Except crazy Pat, guitar players Pat, and Pat stuff. one of the only sane guys that plays guitar that I know. He's one of the only ones, you know? Well, Pat, what, what, uh, is that, uh, like I opened up the show uh, today, you know, one of the things I love about Pat, you guys know, Pat's, you've done so many collaborations worked with so many people and you know the, the, the questions come up uh, uh, it's either the question is who was your favorite person to collaborate with or who was the what was the collaboration that you were in your head that man I, I've got this collaboration with freaking Zeppelin but it never happened that kind of a thing any anything like that it's me <laughs> yeah <Frank. laughs> you know. I gotta so, play with Frank two? what's number two it's true <laughs> I do Frank, do you have a Florida connection somehow? Um, uh, I didn't know my father, so he must have had kids out there and stuff. No, like no, that. I, I was. Know. I just, uh, for some reason, I thought someone in your band. Then maybe. Uh -oh. oh, did it freeze Pat just froze. now? Pat froze. Pat froze. That happens on this show sometimes. Yeah. Well, it's hey, hey, Ron, that, we, we, a, we should play uh, play that track from uh, from Pat's new album. Ah, let's do yes. that. Let's Please. do that. So we'll, let's we'll give him while he gets his internet back. Talk about it. Okay, let's play it, Ben. Because he uh, he played me this album at my party. I had my seventy fifth birthday party uh, two weeks ago, and Pat came to it and he played me the album. We both had the computers out. We're playing each other's albums. You know? oh, is this, oh, just, a, is this a track or is it a video? <laughs>
And that's his wife. I, I, I think that's it. his wife and daughter singing on that. Oh, really? That's yeah. I wanted to awesome. ask him about great. that. Sounded yeah, killer. ass kicking, man. Really good. This is that guitar sound, man. That guitar sound right off the bat. That's just there, yeah, man, right? Yeah, it's just, it's, I know. So that's like good. the stuff that when I play with Pat, you know, it was so cool, you know. Yeah, it's it's just it's him. Some good stuff. Yeah. You know, with my drum sound and his his guitar sound and, and the vocals, we shared vocals. You know, we wrote a song called It Looks Better From a Distance, you know, and it's yeah. all about, you know, like. I love that one I wrote, too. I wrote all the lyrics. I wrote all the lyrics. And it was all about, like, you know, uh, a girl, you know, looking at looking at, and I'm telling, her, hey, look, I look better from a distance. You don't want to get close to me because I'm crazy. <laughs> you know? That's yeah. the concept of the song. You know, it was a killer song. And then we did Another a second song, album. The song, song like, called uh, just appeared. It was awesome, awesome song. So, Carmine, how did that work when when you guys wrote together? Just bounce. I was asking that before. So you just in a room together, and you just bounce things off of each other. Yeah, we had this guy Greg Hampton, who was like a producer with us. Oh, so he was and working he was the a guitar stuff, player. Yeah. He was a guitar player and, and a songwriter. So between the three of us, we just got in the room, and uh, oh, Pat's calling me. Hi, <laughs> Pat. Uh. His phone service um, went out. <laughs> he's having a computer issue. Oh. Uh, we just played. We just played your song. It sounded great. It <laughs> sounds so great, man. Now that's that's your wife, right? That's your wife and daughter. All all Monica. That's all Monica on the background. It's all it's all Monica. His wife singing in the background. Awesome! Oh, wow! Awesome! Yeah, it's awesome, man. You put him on speaker for the rest of the interview. That's what we'll do. <laughs> I'll do it like yeah, that. All right. See if you can get back up. All right. Okay, bro. Love you, man. Bye bye. <laughs> yeah, so so this guy, me, me and Pat and and this guy would, you know, we'd kick around ideas, we'd get grooves and riffs together. Like I had a song called Stand Up. It was you know, had a, a bar nine eight in the middle, nine four in the middle, you know, and it was funky, you know, it was like a uh it was like it's sort of like a, a sly in the family stone, but you gotta stand up and bitch. Yeah. And check it out, and then you got you know that kind of thing with Pat's guitar, and then we went into the solo. Thing. You know, it was just great. And I, I got a killer drum sound on that thing. Yeah, and we had this young yeah, so bass player projects. named Uriah. Uriah, I uh, forgot his last name. Uriah Duffy was his name. This guy, a kid from LA, he was just a monster. Awesome. You know, and so in that song, he was he, he did some cool bass, thing, and I did the vocal on that one. And I said Uriah, <laughs> you know, after he did that bass. Thing. That's cool. But it was just a lot of fun, really easy, Pat. Originally, I did an album with Derringer. It was Derringer Bogut in the piece with Tim Bogut. Wow. All right. And then Tim didn't want to do it anymore. And, and Derringer was Christian and, and he was putting all the Christian lyrics into this rock album. Oh. SBV didn't like that. So Greg Hampton, the producer guy, had the deal. He said, Can we do it with somebody else? So I said to, to Greg, Who do you think would do it? And he said, What if, let's call Pat Travis? So we just called Pat out of the blue and said, we want to do this record for SBV. And he said, yeah. So we ended up doing two records, a live DVD. We toured. Wow. It was awesome. Yeah, it was so much fun. So, yeah. So just you could just walk into stuff like that. You know, like the calls. Yeah. You could just give somebody a call. That's what's great. You pivot. Well, that's what I like. My, like my Guitar Zeus album. It, I, I, I got tomorrow, my 25th anniversary of my Guitar Zeus record comes out. Oh I got God. 39 tracks on there. I got every bot, every guitar player Crazy. except except Paige, uh, Paige uh, Beck, and Clapton. And I don't have Bonamo, so he wasn't really around yet. But uh, everybody, you know, uh, Brian May, Slash, Ingve Malmsteen, wow. uh, Richie Sambora, Zach Wild, Weasel Zappa, Jennifer Batten, Steve Moss. I mean, it just goes on and on. Ty Tabor, Ted Nugent, Neil Sean. Everybody. So is it coming that. out, Kerm? Yeah, it's coming out tomorrow. Box set. Deco, oh, it's coming Deco tomorrow. Records. Okay. Yeah, Deco Records. It's got four four LPs, three CDs, a booklet, and then you can get a bundle that has all that plus a, a Carmine face logo uh, <laughs> medallion, you know, and a, a guitar zoo's pick, a signed Holy autograph smokes. picture, and, and a T-shirt. That's the bundle. You give a right. merchandise away. I like this. It's well, nice. I didn't do this. this Deco, Deco Records. They're really smart. smart. So how can we They're get smart. that, Carmen? Where can people go? They're already asking. Uh, well, they can get it on my website, Uh You can get it probably on Amazon. 
uh, and decoentertainment.com, D-E-K-O entertainment.com, and, uh, and in stores that sell records, you know. If they don't have it, they can order it. But uh, they're doing a good job promoting it. But anyway. That's great. Yeah, you know, the way that came out, you know, I was, I was playing with Jeff Watson, Bob Daisley, and Joel jo Lynn Turner. We had a band in the early 90s when grunge was king. And we were like dinosaurs. You probably <laughs> remember some of that. You know, and we couldn't, you know, you couldn't get arrested, you know. So Jeff Watson just gets a solo album. You know, well, it's Pat again. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, Pat. I can't get back on. All right. Oh, we only got a couple minutes left. We'll bring him back, though. Well, no, no problem. Oh, that's why. That's why. We got to, yeah. Isn't this funny? You know, you know, I love yeah. this. You don't yeah. get this every day. This is uh, awesome. Frankie, I'm wow, going to give you real. Pat's number this and real. email, but I got to get your number and email so I can give you Pat's number and email. Absolutely. I'll say, we'll get it all done after that. Right after we get off, we'll do this. Though. Yeah. It was, where it was where fun, are man. you now, Frank? Uh, what? Where are you right now? Yeah, I'm, we'll in have, we'll, in we'll, we'll I'm in my basement in New York. I'm in Bellows' basement. I'm in Bellows' basement. It's exactly where I am. Hey, Pat, says happy holidays, in? everybody. I'm in this, a town called East okay, Chester. Pat, I'll call you later. I love you. Oh, right outside of New York. York. Yeah, yeah, right. It's about half an hour from so the anyway, so, so Jeff Watson gets a, a solo deal right out of Night Ranger on guitar, right? So I've been trying to get a second solo album deal for 10 years. I said, I said damn, man, you're freaking guitar players. You know, you come out of a band, <laughs> get a solo deal like that. I said, what do I got to do? A guitar album to get a solo deal? You know, I'll call it Guitar Gods and I'll get all my friends to play on it. And we were screwing around with the name Zeus. I said, no, nah, I'll call it Guitar Zeus, right? And we all laughed and we went up to Jeff's studio and recorded. And then I went, we went to bed that night. And I thought, that's a freaking good idea. If I can get that together, I can do drum magazines, guitar magazines, rock magazines, Smart. rock radio. What a great idea. Yeah. How do I do this, you know? It took me two two years to find a manager to get me a big deal out of Japan, right? In the interim, I ran into Brian May, Ted Nugent, and the guys from King's X, and I asked you them, if I did this album, would you play on it? Great. I, I ran into, uh, I did a tour of Japan with Kelly Keeling, who was in Blue Murder, and Tony Franklin, who I loved. Of course. And I said to Kelly, you write songs? Yeah, let me hear your songs. His songs are killer songs, great songwriter. So I got together with him and, you know, we wrote these songs and he got the deal from Japan. First guy on was Brian May. Second oh, guy wow. on was Ted Nugent. Third guy <laughs> on was the two guys from King's X, Doug and, and Ty. Ty, Ty right? sure. And then Kelly went to work with Ingvade and Ingvade says, I want to come on. You got Doug Pinnock? I want to be on the track with Doug. Wow. Okay, we got him. And then Slash heard about it. And before you know it, I, I almost didn't have to call anybody. People started That's calling right, us man. because we had all these That's great things going on. These are good wow. between between Frankie's yeah. book and your bundle. I mean, get a get a shopping yeah. cart and get ready for Christmas, guys. Yeah, Christmas it's time, Christmas, baby. Come on. Christmas time. When did you book? Well, I gotta out? think. I gotta think, Frank. You know, we 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 hope. I mean, we think there's like an upside to everything, kind of. And you open yeah. the show a little bit about kind of uh, how your your mom it was a single mom raised you, and you know your dad kind of left you right uh, early. Uh, and I got to think that probably had affect you in a positive way, in a sense that you're probably the greatest dad out there. Did they have that I, kind of effect on you? I'm definitely one of them because that's all that's that's life to me. And, and obviously, we're from the Italian thing. So you yeah, have one I, one kid. I have one kid. Yeah, don't I, I don't like too much. Uh, yeah, I know. Believe me, I know. I'm I'm I I go old school to, uh, dad on sometimes. Yeah. You know, I just watch. Yeah. He knows I have a look when it's enough is enough. I have the look. So I, and yeah, yeah. the discipline is good. So he's a good it's, kid. It's great when they grow up and they start doing their own thing and they're successful in what they're doing. Yeah. It makes you and feel that, like you did a good job. And that's so, all you want. That's really all yeah. you want. So that's, that's yeah, most absolutely. important. So, and hopefully yeah. things work out and, you know, and hopefully yeah, I mean, we, one day we were, we'll be able to tour. Yeah, we were a bit uh, different. Our family, we had six people in a one bedroom. Oh, well, well, so it was like one. Of, it, it wasn't. Shut up, Siri, you idiot. <laughs> you know, I hate that. You just. You should talk understand. to your assistant that way. I'm talking to you. <laughs> I don't know who you're talking to just now. I was like, oh shit. Damn. 
Yeah, so anyway, well, him I, off, huh? we had a one bedroom, you know, like me, my older brother slept in the double bed my parents used to have. My sister was in a fold out bed and Vinny was in a crib in the living room. My parents slept in a, in a, on a fold out couch, you know, and it was unbelievable. You know, I, I think about that, you know, now I live in a you know, sprawling house, me and my, me and my wife and the dog. We got four bedrooms. We got acres of land, and you know, I knock on wood. What part of Florida? What part of Florida? Well, outside West Palm. Okay, nice. Yeah, nice. yeah, it's beautiful. We got a canal and a lake. Ron's going to come visit one day. We're going to go down to I buy some land, man. Got to get away from the pound. shine town snow. Yeah, so, yeah eleven bucks a pound. You guys, hey. <laughs> I'm telling you, we are gonna we are gonna do the freaking Belmont uh, Avenue stroll do it. all the way down. Do it. It's, it's I'm gonna be amazing. Look, yeah. Give me a call. I'm ready when you guys are. I I we'll, get you guys book, we'll get Bruce to book me and Pat a gig so we can come up there. That'd be you great. Know? And then um, we'll absolutely. go. Ryan, you come in, and we'll go and we'll go to Belmont, wherever it is. Oh man, I never I even like heard. Of it. I never even heard head. of it. Come on, I never heard of it. Oh my gosh! I mean, you know, I heard of the feast in Manhattan. You know. Saint no, Saint man, this is the real deal. So talking about real deals, Frankie Bello, thank you very much. It was great right, spending man. the hour Thanks, with Thank you so much. Carmine, thank, thank you so much. much. I love this. Change numbers, man. And we'll, uh, yeah. You know, I didn't know we had so much in common. I mean, I met you before. but I know, but like yeah, you. let's do that whole thing. I, I promise right after this email, I'm going to send my, my, my info to that, this email. Is that cool, Ron? Okay, yeah. yeah. Cool. For yeah, Carmine, yeah, too? Right. Yeah, yeah, I get that. I'm on that email, too. All right, cool. Guys, thank you for having me. Thank you for supporting the book. Awesome. I love you. Thank You're you awesome, so much. Man. Please be Good safe. Good luck with the book. Thank you very much. Good luck with the record. Yeah, thank you. All right. All, All right, right everybody. Me, brother. Merry Christmas and happy holidays to you and to everyone out there. Artists on lockdown, hanging and banging. I'm Ron Onesti with my big brother, Carmine of Peace. We're missing you, Vinny. He's on the road. We hope you guys join us every week. Don't forget, the next couple of weeks, we'll have some great reruns, some of our greatest shows we've had over the past uh, 72 uh, episodes. Um, but we do return January the 8th with... Uh, um, Bobby Rydell, rock and roll legend. Want to say hi to the guy that made this all happen from the beginning with Carmine. That's right. Steve Love. Hope you're having a good time out there, wherever you're at, probably Japan or in New York or wherever he is today, tomorrow. But we love you, brother, and thanks for making this whole thing happen. Gwen, everybody, Ben, Gwen, everybody puts us together every week. It's uh, It's been really, really something. And I just, from the bottom of my heart, want to thank you all who've been supporting us, all the people on the chats been uh, been with us each week here on artists on lockdown hanging and banging wish you guys a very healthy and safe holiday season keep rocking keep listening keep watching we'll see you back here live on january the 8th otherwise see you on uh, hanging and banging artists on lockdown every thursday night 6 p.m central 7 p.m eastern and 4 p.m on the west coast have a great holiday season guys love you